How's it going, everyone? Way the Known here, and welcome to another episode of Cosplay Con Talk, where we basically discuss everything pertaining to the cosplay community and conventions. I am joined here by Cindy Rue in another episode for Get to Know That Cosplayer. How are we doing, Cindy? We're good. How are you? I am doing really well. Again, thank you for coming on to Cosplay Con Talk to talk about your cosplay convention experience, the cosplays you've done, the cons you've gone to, and any advices and just a, a general experience that you would like to share. So, to begin, as always with these, how long have you been cosplaying for and what got you into cosplay? So, in December of 2015 is when I went to my first convention. There was one locally and my husband was like, hey, do you want to go to this? And I was like, don't people dress up for those? And um, I've always been a drama nerd my whole life. And um, and my kids were in drama and I helped with props and um, costumes and everything. So I was like, people dress up, right? And he's like, yeah, I think so. So I was like, hold on. And I ran upstairs and I was like, what do I have? What do I have? And started looking through stuff, what I could put together. And I ended up uh, putting together um, an Amy Pond outfit, you know. Ooh, Doctor Who, nice. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we can go now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. And then my next one was a Jessica Jones closet cosplay because we went to another small one. From the uh, Netflix ser series, Jessica Jones? Yeah. Nice. And you know, I just kind of was like, hey, this is kind of fun. I really enjoy this. And from there, it's, it's history. Nice. Um, well, you answered my question about what your very first cosplay was. Um, what was the convention that you went to? Was seven? Five? No, eight years. Yeah, eight years ago. Was it? Yeah. it's twenty. You said 2015 was your first? Yeah, it was like the very end of the year. Here in December, so yeah, so. minus, yeah, eight. It's been almost eight years since your oh, first wow. convention. <laughs> oh, you're almost you're two two years, and you're uh, almost as I would put it, a cosplay veteran. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. <laughs> it still feels all kind of new and everything, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess so. So yeah. So what was your first convention that you went to all those years ago? It was Modesto Con. I've never heard of that. Mind go, mind talking a little bit about that for those who may not be familiar with it, such as myself. So um, I live in the Central Valley in California, um, and Modesto is one of the towns around me. And so it was just a small local convention, and um, I think it was a, definitely a good size convention for getting my feet wet and going and. Um, met a lot of people and had a lot of fun and saw a lot of fandoms and so um uh, Modesto is one of the larger cities around where we are um I kind of live in the rural uh, country kind of area um my little town nobody really knows <laughs> even people who live around here don't know it <laughs> so yeah I'm just looking up Modesto right now and i guess some event that uh, okay that got well your video won't be up to like july but i'm looking at like modesto toy anime con ohana comic con well that, that's in turlock huh yeah so it's about an hour south a little more than an hour south of um sacramento and um east an hour 15 minutes east of san francisco nice um, what was it like going to your first con back then? Um, it was fun because I went with my husband and my daughters and we, we had a good time. We just, um, it was a new experience to see all these other people that um, kind of liked it's the same kind of uh, geeky, nerdy stuff that we liked and all in one place, you know, like. Um, our our experience before that, you know, would have been when we were like younger and we'd go hang out at the comic book store. Uh, people don't really do that much anymore, but, you know, it was like doing that, but on a huge scale. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember when we were younger, we'd get our paychecks on Friday and be like, okay, let's go hit the comic book <laughs> store. And 
see what new edition of Spider-Man or Batman was out at the time. Uh, She-Hulk. She-Hulk. Nice. <laughs> She-Hulk and X-Men. <laughs> Which I got to say, your She-Hulk was really well done. No, I don't have She-Hulk. Oh, I thought you did She-Hulk. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of another cosplayer. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. She she is my favorite, and I would love to do her. I just have not ventured into the body paint on myself yet. I've done it for students and for friends, but not, not on, on yourself self. yet. <laughs> and yeah. There, and there's, as I always say, there is nothing wrong with that. So... Nice. Um, I'm near in the future though <laughs> oh I like I'm looking forward to looking forward to seeing that um so um if you can remember how many cons have you been to all together I have no idea. <laughs> um, it sounds like you've been to a lot though and I know recently last year you or earlier this year you went to um sac anime winter yes yes that was a lot of fun nice how was that con this year i've never I've, I've only been to sac anime summer i've never been to the winter or spring ones yet oh okay yeah it was good um i enjoyed it oh excuse me one minute alexa cancel sorry something went wrong okay <laughs> sorry about that I it's had okay alarm. i had an alarm set to prepare for this and then <laughs> <laughs> you're completely it just went wrong. off i forgot about it <laughs> But Zach and I mean, winter was uh, was fun and everything. Yeah, it was good. Um, uh, I've now developed a bit really um, strong uh, kind of cause family community, and so now it's kind of just great to be able to go and see all those people and see what they've been working on since the last time we saw each other, and to kind right. of get those opportunities. And um, I'm also a photographer, so I did bring the camera and I nice. had a few little, no, three mini shoots that I did. So that was really nice. Um, so. Very cool. Um, So a question I have been actually asking, I can make it a two part one instead of a one part. So advice for uh, con goers who are wanting to go to a convention and advice for cosplayers who are wanting to go to their first convention. Um, really kind of just both have fun, you know, um, whether you're going just to hang out and check it out and see what it's all about, just have fun. If you're trying to get your foot wet and into the cosplay world, have fun and don't be... Don't be afraid to do a character that you love no matter what, you know. Um, don't let anything hold you back from doing the characters that you love. And because that's really what it's all about is you representing the characters that you love and you um, want to share that love of that character, you know. Oh, yeah. No, so. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree on that. 100%. Uh, and I'm also sure that you're, you'd also agree if 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 someone's going to their first con, whether depending on the state or whether it's always it's always good to plan accordingly on your cosplays, whether you know whether you're going to a warm con or a cold con. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, I don't know if you had seen, but we just did an X Men photo shoot. Um, I have yep, with uh, with Hummin and Cable and Beth and all yeah. of them. A really, really cool, them. really cool cosplays, by the way. And Jubilee's one of my um, staples. And but because I knew it was going to be an outdoor shoot, unlike LA where we were inside, I was like, oh, let me investigate Jubilee a little bit and find one of her warmer uh, cause, you know, costumes. And so I kind of revamped and did a different version of her. Nice. <laughs> For those who are not familiar with Jubilee, her main her main outfit is a yellow trench coat, pink shirt, pink, top. pink yeah, and blue pink shorts, top and blue shorts and blue boots. Nice. So. Well, so from what I see in it, you guys it looked like you guys had really fun in that shoot. Oh, we did. We had a great time. <laughs> We're a really silly bunch, and um, we all love and adore each other. So. It just makes for a lot of fun when we get together. So very um, nice. Was it today or yesterday? Um, 
Roger posted a really, or sorry, Hummin H2 um, posted a cute little reel. <laughs> I, 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 I saw that. Starts <laughs> off real serious, and I'm not going to give away the ending, but well, by the time by the time that by the time this this will be out in July, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Nice, and I'm also sure you'll agree on this. If someone's going to their first con, make sure they have to make sure they have a set budget because it cons can get cons conventions can get pretty expensive depending on what you're wanting to spend your money on. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially if um, I think the biggest thing is to know is that if um, a voice actor or an actor that you really love is going to be there, a lot of the vendors will be like, oh, this person's going to be there. So they kind of stock up on merch that goes with that actor or voice actor or um, personality and then you're like walking and you're like, so they're going, oh, I only came here to get his autograph. And, but look, they have a Funko Pop of him. Oh, look, they have a sticker of him. Oh, look, they have this of him, of, of him, of him, of him, of him, of him. And, you know, next thing you know, you went there planning to spend only the $50 on the um, art, on the autograph and you end up with. Three hundred dollars of merch for that character. So yeah, so you do have to kind of be careful and make sure, like, okay, I'm going. I'm only spending a hundred extra dollars outside of my ticket, and kind of try to stick yeah. to that. I mean, not to mention, you know, conventions when they have food for sale, it is not cheap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, but there's always the street dog. Oh yeah, street. I, I have to say that's the one thing I like about cons <laughs> is the food vendors that the, that that come to the con because the food is the food is cheaper, but it's still really good. So, yeah, um, and now with the whole um, food truck industry, oh, you it, know, it, it boomed during COVID. Yeah, they kind of just um, line up across the streets or around the area and you, you know, you walk two blocks and you have like six or seven choices of what to eat or something. Always a good thing. Um, now, another question I've always, I always try to ask, um, what are your thoughts on a, as I call it, a convention expo, exit buddy, someone to bring with you to a con in case, you know, things just get a little too much. Like you need to go say, Hey, can I, can we go over here so I can like sit down and relax for a bit? Just basically someone to bring with you to a con so you're not like having to feel like you need to go alone. Yeah. Um, that's always nice. If you have somebody that you can be meeting there or somebody that you can bring with you, um, Depending on the cosplay that you're wearing, um, like sometimes I go and my handler like ends up staying with me the whole time. Other times, you know, my cosplay is an easy thing. So they'll, they go off and they go shopping or whatever. And, you know, it's not a big deal because my cosplay is easy to handle. But when you like have a prop and then, um, you know, supplies and stuff and like I'm diabetic. So I kind of have to have um, a little emergency food supply with me at all times. So, um, you know, sometimes it'll be my daughter, my husband, or my nephew, or a friend. And they'll be, like, helping me just to make sure that um, I... Because, I don't know, you kind of get into this... Um, what can we call it? Um, con phase. And oh, you yeah. Kind of don't realize that all of a sudden three hours have gone by and you haven't eaten or drink, you know, drank something or, and you're like, and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, you need to eat something. <laughs> oh yeah. No, you always got to stay, you always got to, you know, stay charged at a con because, you know, like you said, you're on the con and you realize, Oh wait, I'm like going to pass out. I need to go get something to eat. Yeah. And, and a lot of the cons now are great. They'll have designated areas that are, um, you know, where you sit and it's like when you're in that area, it's like don't approach the cosplayer because it's a break area. Oh, yeah. No, those are those are nice. And I I, yeah. I would love to see more cons have those, especially like. Yeah, you know, those the, are really nice. Oh, yeah. No. Um, oh, God, let's see. Um, so. Um, 
So by the time this is out in July, what cons will you have gone to for the 2023 years and what cons do you plan on going to afterwards? Um, hold on. Let me let my list. <laughs> so, um, so, so far coming up, um, we're going to another small one. We have a lot of good small ones around us which is um, East Bay Comic Con, which is in Concord. Um, and then um, next month, I will be a guest at the Clovis Weekend Blender, um, which is put on by Die Hards and Sons. Nice. And it's a, ni it's a nice first um, convention for people in our area because one, it's held at a mall. Two, it's free. Those are always the best. And um, it's basically a great way to introduce, and they're kid-friendly, to introduce your kids, um, your oh. friends to, you know, because they're not really putting out a lot. And then they have great vendors that show up, cosplay guests, and a cosplay contest. Nice. So, and, like, a, like a, basically like a baby con. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's nice. Um, they call them Malcon or the weekend, it, the weekend Blender. Nice, that's really cool. And I've noticed a lot of uh, some malls are actually been doing that. Um, yeah. have you ever had a travel out of state for a con? Um, I um, my daughter lives in Phoenix, Arizona, so I went to Fan Fusion last year. Good, con. And it was great because I got to meet a lot of my um. Uh, Instagram friends that are from the area and were in attendance at that one. So that was kind nice. of nice. So. Um, very cool. Um, what advice would you like to give to someone who wants to travel out of state for a con? Um, I would say figure out one of your uh, mo more com compact uh, cosplays for at least the first one. <laughs> because um, Packing the cosplay stuff and props and everything and then getting there can be difficult. Oh, I, I imagine. Yeah. And then um, I've had friends who've lost their uh, luggage on the way there. So that then when they got there, they had no costume. <laughs> That's never so, fun. So, yeah. So if you can do a compact one, you know, at least have one thrown into the carry on so that when you get there you have at least one. <laughs> oh no i i i wholeheartedly agree it's it's kind of like a question i i always i usually forget to ask but you know if you're going to a con and you're on con crunch and you're like you know would you recommend bringing a extra cosplay with you just in case you can't get your one cosplay finished so spider gwen is always in my bag so she's your 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 your, your go-to basically. Yeah, she's my backup, my go-to backup for um just about anything and almost any con that you go to has some type of Spider-Verse meetup. Oh yeah, which is so becoming I, more popular because of the movies. Yeah, so when I was in Phoenix, you know, I only wore Spider-Gwen for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> um would it be uh this one? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, like, oh, and sorry. I, I, I <laughs> and, saw, that was I, and that was my good friend Beth right afterwards. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, I want to. I want to go. Well, I want to go more into uh, your Spider Gwen once we start talking about your cosplays and everything. Um. Oh yeah. So on to the cosplays now. When someone's wanting to get into cosplay or they're a cosplayer on a budget, um, what's some advice you would like to give when it comes to you know? being a cosplayer on a budget from you know thrifting to upcycling to you know whatever start in your closet i always say start in your closet um you know pretty much like trying to think of like what is her name little the little louise from um bob's burgers oh louise yeah um so, like, I mean, you probably have a shirt that would match her shirt. You probably have a shirt or a already made skirt that would match her skirt. You know, if you have a shirt, you can just cut it and turn it into a skirt. And then little combat boots. The hat would probably be the hardest thing for oh, yeah. out of the closet. 
Um, yeah, that you probably have to like buy online yeah. or something. Yeah, but or like doing Jessica Jones. I mean, it's pretty much how I dress normally, you know, leather jacket, black combat boots, jeans. Um, so that one was really easy. Uh, my only thing is I did have um, my blonde hair with it. I had not invested in a dark wig at that time. Again, there, and there's nothing but, wrong with that. Yeah, which is totally fine. I mean, people could tell, you know, or if they didn't, they'd be like, oh, who are you cosplaying? You talk, Oh, yeah, I see it, you know. So <laughs> start, start in the closet. Then, yeah, definitely thrifting or even borrow from a friend. If you have a friend who's already an avid cosplayer and you're about the same size or something, you know, don't be afraid to be like, hey, I really want to um, check this out with you. Do you think I could borrow, you know, one of your cosplays or something? Um, you know, I they probably know. most likely say yes. Um, or start with an old Halloween costume. That you have. It, it, it works. I mean, if you're on a budget, you know. And I know there are some people who don't want to start out that, that way. They think they want to like, you know, go big because I know sometimes when someone's looking into cosplay, they'll like, you know, you type in cosplay on Google. And next thing you know, they'll see all these well-known cosplayers making these big builds. And they think that's what cosplay is. And they're, and then they're scared to get into it. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean, after that, I mean, start picking up the skills and don't be afraid to ask other cosplayers. Hey, did you make that? How did you make that? They'll tell you. They they might even direct you to the links that they used or to their own tutorial on how to do it, you know? Um, I wanted to learn how to sew so I could sew my own, you know, cosplays. And so I started taking classes at the local community college. Nice. That's that's really that's pretty pretty sound advice right there for anyone who's wanted to learn how to sew or if they know someone who can sew that they can teach them as well. Yeah, definitely. And ask the other cosplay friends. I, I mean, like within our community, um, one of us is a great foam builder. And so they teach me stuff all the time. I help them with sewing, um, teaching them simple stitches and stuff like that. So we just kind of all help one another. Nice. Um, as you might as well ask now, um, what was the very first cosplay you ever made that you ever sewn yourself? If you can remember. Um, completely 100% myself would be um, Merida. Really? Which, that's yeah, a lot was, of fa That's a lot of fabric. Yeah, it was 240 plus hours. Um so, uh, yeah, she hasn't had a proper debut yet. I did take her to the Ren Fair um, this past summer, but I still have not finished her um, bow, which I want to finish and make myself so that she is 100%, you know, oh, yeah. for me. I took um, uh, leather um, classes from Serena's Custom Leather, and she taught me how to make my um, belt and my quiver. Shout out to shout out to Serena. Yeah, Serena's awesome, guys. Uh, she was very patient with me, teaching me how to do everything, and and then my um, teacher Jonathan at um, Delta, you know, helped me a great learning how to sew and buy the right nice. material so that it had the right kind of drape and the right kind of hanging and nice yeah so once merida gets her i mean there are a couple photos of her on my instagram page but once i do a proper shoot and finish of her i'm gonna be really excited nice now um one more question before we get into uh the cosplays you've done I've noticed a good some of your cosplays you're wearing heels like your uh Jubilee, for example, or your uh your two B from Near Automata. What's it been like wearing heels for your cosplays and what advice would you want to give to someone who's considering on wearing heels for their first cosplay? So um like for Jubilee, um I usually have a pair of flats with me because hers are a little bit higher. So I almost always have and when I'm not photographing. If we're like doing the vendor hall really heavy, I'll have the flats on and have the heels in my bag. Um, so that is one way to 
not kill your feet too much at a convention, but like it's easier when you're just doing the photo shoot to throw the heels on and to do it. But then others are make sure that you get um, heels that are comfortable to walk in, you know, that don't overly kill your feet. Um, also, you can get the memory foam shoe inserts. Which those, are those, great. I, I, I love memory foam shoes. Yeah, so you can put those into your boots, and those help uh, your feet to last a little bit longer. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. And it, even mm -hmm. with flats, is always good to break in your flats too. Mm -hmm. Def. Oh yeah, definitely. Always break. Always break in your shoes. Do not wear a brand new pair of shoes for the first time oh, at a con. Oh, I've heard stories where people's feet are like blistering to the point where they started bleeding yeah i'll i'll wear um two pairs of socks and for like two to three weeks wa walk for like half an hour in my house around in the shoes take them off and do it again the next day to get them broken in you know i've i've, I've heard that method i've also heard sports socks are good to wear as well because they're a thicker thicker material yeah nice so now on to the con the cosplays you've done portion of this interview. What um what has been that one cosplay that you've not done in so long that you would like to bring back? Um, well, it's kind of weird because a lot of my cosplays happened during COVID. Um, because what happened is as a teacher, I had students that needed um, reading hours. And a lot of my friends were like, oh, my kid needs a reading hours and there's, I have four kids and they need somebody to read to or somebody to read to them. And I was like, oh, I'll read to them. <laughs> so I started um, Miss Cindy Reads. And then on my Facebook page, I read the Harry Potter books. And every Sunday, I would read in cosplay and character. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And then after the Harry Potter books I went to the next series and then the next series and then the you know so but um I guess you know Tonks Nymphadora Tonks is my favorite character I really love her character from the Harry Potter series and because of all the new characters and the charity events that I've been wearing characters for I haven't worn her in a while so yeah I do need to get her back on and <laughs> wear her again even though it hasn't been like so long it would but be. still it, it's it's a character you would like to uh update and bring back yeah and one that i'm currently updating is my peeves also from harry potter Ooh, i've <laughs> never seen anyone do peeves i know with um the with the new hogwarts legacy game we actually get to see peeves in a different kind of outfit too Oh, that'll be great. Um, yeah, so I made a closet cosplay of him. Actually, it was the it was <laughs> my first uh, cosplay that I was starting to sew myself, but then COVID hit, and so I didn't get to finish it. So I only had the pants done. So I kind of just did a makeshift version. Oh, that is so cool, though. I've again, I've never seen anyone do peeps of poltergeist from Harry Potter. Yeah, so now I'm updating it, and I'm excited. So. Oh, I, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> yeah, and I just got a hat from Enchanted Seamstress on Instagram. Well, I've, yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah, she's amazing. She has some great stuff, and so um, I got a hat and went with yellow, you know, so I because my, my Peeves pants that I made are yellow. Nice. So. That's Again, that is really cool. Yeah, so he's my upgrade for this year, next year, how, whenever I get him done. <laughs> nice. Um. So would you happen to have any one-and-done cosplays? I call them they're the cosplays that you've done once because you were curious, a friend asked you to, or it's just for a, a group cosplay, but like after that, like, I don't know if I ever want to do this one again. Um. I don't know. I did. Um, oh my gosh! Uh, well, when I read read the Brandon Mole series, I did some cosplays from it, and then um, so some of those I probably won't do again because 
you know, people who were reading the books along with me, they knew who the characters were because I was reading the book to them. And wait, what's it? What, what's the series called? Uh, Brandon Mole, the series. <laughs> I'm totally blanking right I'll, now. I'll, I'll just write Brandon Mole cosplay. No, no, just uh, he's the author. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes, I got you. Yeah. Um, so, um, Fable Haven. <laughs> Fable, Fable Haven. I like that name. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So while I was reading the books to everybody, they, you know, knew who the books um, were about and uh, they were familiar with the characters because of course I was reading it to them. But if I was to take that character to a convention, people would be like, uh, I don't get it. I don't know who it is. So it probably wouldn't go over as well. I mean, but I do like obscure characters. So like Peeves, who didn't make it into the movies. I like being Peeves. Yeah, I, I remember hearing yeah. about why he never, multiple reasons why the, why the uh, character, the short version from what I've heard, the actor had like two weeks worth of shooting, but then was told, yeah, we're not going to show your scenes. And I've heard multiple stories on why he never made it into the movies, even though he is a major supporting character in the books. Yeah. So. <laughs> I hear your dog's in the background. Yeah, she she hears us talking and she's like, hey, I want to be involved, but she's behind the gate. So <laughs> um, she's like, oh, I don't understand. <laughs> so you said you've cosplayed with your family and your husband. What has that been like cosplaying with your family? So, uh. My children are into theater. Um, yeah, my husband. So I can't say never anymore. Um, so I'll, I'll share a story. So my husband had never worn um, a costume for as long as I had known him. And we were putting together a Spider-Man shoot. And I was like, oh, my gosh, 32 people have RSVP'd for this Spider-Man shoot. And he goes, you'll be lucky if you get get 16 or he goes I bet you won't get more than 16 and I said I'll take that bet and he's like what and I said you just said you bet that we won't get more than 16 oh, like, I'll oh. take that bet Oof. and he goes he's like okay he goes okay but and then he's like okay he goes what 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 if I lose and I'm like if you lose I get to pick a costume and you have to wear it <laughs> and he was like okay and then i'm like and if i lose you can pick my next cosplay and i'll do whatever character you pick so black so i was telling the group i was like okay guys you guys can't back out now you know because we need more than and, and then he changed it to be like 20 that there had to be more than 20 and i was like okay that's fine oh he he, he was trying to he was trying to not not chicken out but like oh man yeah, I I, I I gotta like do something so I'm not having to cause. <laughs> well, needless to say, I won. So he did do Mace Windu with my General Leia, which Ooh. I. Uh, I think I saw pictures of that on your Instagram. Yeah, so I was really excited, and actually, we almost didn't have any photos because we were leaving, and then one of my friends, who's also because I was doing a lot more behind the camera than I was in front of the camera, and she was like, "Oh wait, let me get some photos of you guys before you take off." So thanks, Joy. Is this um, the uh Yes? <laughs> oh, I his base window outfit's really well done, and I love your uh General Organa cosplay as well. So thank you. Oh, so really yeah. So that one was a twisting of the arm. That will probably never ever happen again, but I'm very happy it did. <laughs> and then my girls are more um, yeah, we'll we'll do it. So my I mean, we don't, we haven't ever done a let's all do the same fandom kind of one yet, or if, I don't know if we ever will, but my daughter that's in Phoenix that I was telling you about that I go down to Fan Fusion with, she did um, Katara from um, Last Airbender. Ooh. I'm sorry, Avatar, the last, yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, no. I, I, you knew I, 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 know, I know who I know who you meant. Very <laughs> cool. And so she did uh, Katara in her uh, Fire Nation outfit that I, um, I made for her, and she pieced together. Nice. That was a joint effort. Hey, sometimes so that was always fun to do. Um, Now, what has been your all-time favorite cosplay? Like, no, aside from Spider-Gwen, 
what has been your all time favorite cosplay? Like, no matter what, you always enjoyed uh, wearing it. So, yeah, well, Tonks is definitely my all time favorite, but McG Professor McGonagall is becoming my huge fan favorite. So, I'm loving wearing it because of the audience reaction. And, you know, everybody is so you know, accepting of it. But I also have a lot of fun with Professor Trelawney. Oh, Professor Tre Ooh, the, uh, and, uh, um, I, I bring a, um, a crystal ball and a teacup that Ooh. my daughter uh, painted the grim inside of. Yeah. Oh my God. So that's a lot of fun. And nice. Then of course, uh, Gwen is just easy. Um, but I really, I borrowed Rogue from a friend. And afterwards, I was like, oh, I need this one. Like, oh, <laughs> you, I, like, I need a cosplay it now. I need to like, get the cosplay now. Yeah, so. Oh, which, uh, which, uh, which version of Rogue uh, did you borrow? In? So um, the comic book, the old one. Oh, when she's wearing the <laughs> uh, brown leather jacket? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 90s. Nice. Very nice. 90s, yeah. And so... But it was it's the one I grew up with, so nice. And everybody's like, "No, I like her new straight hair," and I'm like, "I like her new straight hair too." But to me, in my brain, I always will enjoy seeing. I'll, I'll always enjoy seeing a '90s rogue at a convention. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of them, but when you do, it's like, yeah, you know who it is. Everyone yeah, knows that Southern Belle. I just did strawberry shortcake, and I think she's definitely going to be one of my favorites. Ooh. I don't think so, I've ever seen do anyone do a strawberry shortcake. I've always, I've never seen anyone do a strawberry shortcake. I've always seen people do like My Little Pony and everything, but I've never seen anyone do a strawberry shortcake before. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I, even to go that extra mile, I, um, I sent saturated my strawberry on top of my hat, the polyfill in um, a strawberry sh uh, shortcake uh, scent before sewing it into the hat so that it does give off um, a scent if people smell the hat, the strawberry. That's, on. that's definitely going the extra mile. And I have to commend, <laughs> I have to commend you doing it for that. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, I had a lot of uh, men and women. I was surprised. <laughs> I mean, up to me in LA being like, oh my gosh, you were my first best friend. And at first I was like, what? And I'm like, oh, Strawberry Shortcake was your first best friend. I got it. And, yeah. Oh, you see, I like when people, whether they're an older cosplayer or a younger cosplayer, I like to see when they cosplay old characters before they were born or when they were a kid. Like, yes, I don't see, see many people do it, but I love it. <laughs> Especially the yeah. ones you're like, don't, you know, a whole lot of people don't know of. Like, that was nice. Well, I was down there with um, a charity, Project Wish Upon a Star, and the I, have, I, I have heard of I've heard of that from uh, Distance Nerding. Yeah, and the theme of their booth was 1980s. So, Love it. Yeah, so I did. As soon as they said it's the 80s, I was like, I'm doing Strawberry Shortcake. It was my favorite thing as a kid, and nice. you know, I did Strawberry Shortcake and She-Ra and Jubilee. Ooh, you did She-Ra too. Ooh, nice. Oh, the uh, 1980s Shira, not the uh, new. Yeah, the old Shira. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um. So, like I said, this will be out in July, um, of this year for your interview. Um, what cosplays do you have planned for this year that you'll be doing? Um. So currently, I am building Roll from Mega Man. Who? Roll. Um. How do you spell that? R O L L. She she's the little sister from Mega Man. <laughs> I'm I'm looking her up right now. So and then um I'm working on <gasps> Oh, I know her. She's yeah, um Yeah. <laughs> and the best thing is you have uh are you gonna be wearing a wig or are you gonna be using your natural I'll hair? I'll be using my own hair. Nice. So yeah, and then I'm working on um Black Widow. Ooh. Have you done Black Widow before? No. Uh, I actually started her uh, right before COVID because it was supposed to be one of my next ones for um, the spring. And then COVID hit. So I just kind of like, ah, oh, forget it. And then I <laughs> had the readings. So I did all the cosplays for the readings. 
And then nice. I was like, oh, I need to finish her. You know, I have pieces and stuff. So I need to finish putting it all together. Nice. Um, and then I am doing um, a Hellfire Gala look for the magic from X-Men. Hellfire Gala look? Yeah. So it's uh, like a formal formal dress kind of Ooh. look for the X-Men. Oh, nice. I remember uh, I had a friend tell me that they uh, did something, something like that. They did a Rococo version of Harley Quinn. So fun. I, I, as, oh, sorry. I was like, my photographer said to me, I'm trying to put together a Rococo um, meets David Bowie uh, la labyrinth kind Ooh. of hue. <laughs> That you got really be. excited when you said Rococo because I'm like I I I I like I, I I've interviewed so far two cosplayers who've done Rococo Disney and Rococo DC and like what is that I, oh it's basically French uh, uh French uh, fancy French attire fashion cosplay like, yeah. I think it's really cool um so I imagine I know uh, role looks simple but I imagine she's gonna take some work because. Even though she looks simple, it seems like it's going to take a bit to do. Well, I'm making her 100% from scratch, so... Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, so, what materials do you plan on using? She's actually almost done. She's, it... she's pretty much all cotton. Um, okay, so. for, I, I just looked up another version of her. I was like, oh, I already thought you were doing that. Yeah, no, I'm not doing the Zentai suit one. Uh, because when I first looked her up, I was like... Oh, that's interesting. And I was watching all the videos of the game and everything, and they were all her. Yeah, pictures. she has she has many different. I mean, she even has. Yeah, yeah, she has many different looks. Oh my goodness! So I'm actually merging the one that you uh, showed at first. And, oh, yeah, that one with the one where she has the more sailor. Um, yes. I'm merging those two. <laughs> That's gonna be really cool. The boots should the boots should be interesting because those look like uh, I'm doing the Mary Janes. <laughs> nice I like Mary Janes. <laughs> Very nice. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And which version of Black Widow do you plan on doing? The one from the comics, from Avengers, her um Black Widow movie version. So the movie version with the shorter red hair, not the straight ish hair, the oh when she's in uh, when she's in, introducing Avengers, yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Nice, that's looking really cool to see. Um, now, um, I, I get all lost on the timelines. Now, yeah, right? um, so it's like hard for me to say uh, pre Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely understand yeah, understand that. Um. So I'm going to be asking probably two of my favorite questions now. And if anyone's ever familiar with these, you know what questions I'll be asking next. Any cosplay mishaps, cosplays that, you know, ripped, toured, anything that could go wrong, did go wrong, whether you were getting ready for the con, a shoot, or while at the convention? Um, I've actually been pretty lucky. Knock on wood. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> so that just set off the dogs. Um. I haven't had um, any real big mishaps um, with the cosplays or anything, but um, I have seen some, and uh, I have a good friend, Odin, of Odin Makes. I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to interview I have, him. I have not, but I think I've seen him. I think you've mentioned him on your Instagram quite a few times. Yeah, he's pretty awesome, um, but he, he does a lot of our cosplay repairs oh I, I i love i i love cosplay repairs they're yeah, like you're they're so your they're your best friend yeah so if something happens you know you just go to his uh booth and he fixes it right up nice that's that's really well shout out to odin yeah nice um now my all-time favorite question i call them cosplay convention horror stories slash weird and awkward moments do you have any you can share that are appropriate? Because this is a PG-13 channel, and I always do allow one <laughs> F word. So, oh, yeah. Um, the the hardest one for me is when people are like, hey, can I have a photo? And it's like, yes. And, but then the most awkward one was when I had somebody, like, 
like yank me into them, you know, and I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're we're past way we're we're way past consent. Yeah, I'm like, Jeez. yeah. So when you see those signs that say cosplay, that is basically Gosh, what just equal consent. Yeah, um, it's definitely ask and ask before you touch as well. You know, ask for the photo, which I totally appreciated, but you need to ask before you oh, touch. Yeah. And it's it's like it's like going stuff. to it's like going to a museum. You can look, but you can't touch. Yeah. So. What uh what cosplay was that that someone like decided just to yank you and just like not even ask? I think I was wearing Misty that day. Who? Misty from oh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Oh, nice. Yeah, I yeah. saw that you've done a few Pokemon cosplays. So, yeah, yeah I no. love Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, no, always, always ask people. Come on, now, you're an adult. You should know better. Kids, I can understand, but adults, like it's. You know. Yeah, it's very different when a three-year-old runs up and hugs Cinderella versus a, you know, 35-year-old grabbing, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there, there, is, there is a huge difference. <laughs> um, Now, what has been your favorite convention moment? Like, to this day, it's something you'll always remember no matter what. So, um... Well, that's a hard one. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to say um, Mother's Day a couple of years back because all three of my girls went to a convention with me on Mother's Day Aww. in Fresno and uh, they dressed up and, you know, whether it was in a cosplay or just a fandom shirt or something and they spent the day with me and I, that is, you know, that's I, really nice. Yeah, it was just, it was a great day because it was something that they did for me, you know, even the one that like was like, yeah, I don't really want to go, but I'm going to do this because it's Mother's Day and we're going to do it for you kind of thing, you know. That's, that's really nice. And especially on Mother's Day, I've, it's rare when you see, when there's a, when there's a con of Mother's Day because, you know, it's Mother's Day, but that was really nice if all of your daughters wanted to do that for you. Yeah, so I have to say it's my favorite. I mean, I have lots of good, you know, memories with friends and everything, but that's probably my favorite. Nice. Oh, one question I forgot to ask. I oh, again, I, I've done, I've done, God, I've done over a hundred of these. I'm not joking. That is a real number. I've done over a hundred of these. What is your all-time dream cosplay? Like, it's a character you've always wanted to cosplay. You've never had the time, or you know stuff to do it so uh who would be my i mean i i totally want to do she hawk but um right now my um my cosplay that i want to do uh, my favorite character is um mina from my hero academia I'm looking her up right now. And her cosplay is not that difficult or anything, but again, she has the paint. <gasps> oh, in, oh, and uh, what she is just the cutest. So her school, her school outfit or her. Uh... No, I want to do her hero outfit. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, that would be honestly. I don't know how you would do the suit. I mean, I know sometimes I sell the suits online but like that would be cool to see i've yeah I, I i've seen people do mina but i i've only seen like once or twice in person people do her uh her hero outfit that will be cool so i actually have a friend that does a fantastic version of her and my problem is, is i can't wear contacts oh the the, the scalara lenses the full-on uh, blackout whatever you yeah, call it yeah so um so but my friend i was like I'm just going to admire your Mina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a dream one that I would absolutely love to. Yeah, play. that would be really cool to see. I imagine she, she would take some time to do, but I would like to see. Again, I've, I've really, I've only seen like one or two in person, but seeing like, that'd be cool, fun to do. Yeah. Nice. Um. So last question I always ask. Um, just advice in general for those who are listening and or watching this that you like to throw out there. Um, have fun. Um, 
be kind, be nice, <laughs> um, you know, enjoy yourself. Um, and just, you know, if you're nice to people, people will be nice back to you and, you know, have a good time. That's really the important thing is, and find, find, find your people. That's, that's it. Find, find your people because then it just becomes even better. Oh, no, that, that, that I wholeheartedly agree on. Um, I think. Thing. That should do it again. Cindy, thank you for coming on to Cosplay Con Talk to talk about your cosplay and convention Thanks, experience. Um, looking forward to seeing what cosplays and conventions you'll be attending. And for those, um, also real quick before we end this, would you care to promote yourself by dropping those links below? Oh. Um, is there a way for me? To, you mean... Oh, no, like, this, say, yeah, say, yeah, say, say oh. your socials. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it's something new I've been doing. I was like, anyway. drop them below. I'm like, is there somewhere for Oh, yeah, no. well, I mean, I mean, like, below, like, you know, the, in the description they'll be putting. Okay, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm Cindy Rue Cosplays, S-I-N-D-I-R-O-O -O Cosplays, both on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, which I forgot to say on distance for me when I was talking to them. Um, I had forgot that I even had a Twitter because yeah. I don't use it much. I know I, um, I I I hear that I have it, but I don't use it a lot. Yeah, I don't have a TikTok yet. And then I'm Cindy Chef Photography. Oh, nice! I'll make sure to add that in as well. Is that is that for is you have as a separate Instagram? That's just my website. Yeah. Oh, send. Okay, I'll have you send me that so I can put that as well. Okay, thank you, YouTube, for letting me know. Um, so yeah, again, uh, links to those will be in the description below. Be sure to, as I and as I always say at um, the uh, at the end of these, be sure to check them out and give them a follow to see more amazing cosplays. Yeah, I'd appreciate it. Of course, and that should do it. As always, I'm Wayne the Unknown. Until next time, thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for watching. Oh, right, I forgot I have that mouse unplugged. <laughs>